Hallelujah. Let us hear the reading of God's word. Now, if Christ is preached that he has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty and your faith is also empty. Yes, and we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he did not raise up, if in fact the dead do not rise. For if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, then your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. Then also those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men the most pitiable. But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. Amen. Here ends the reading of God's word. Today's reading came from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 12 to verse 22. Amen. Before the word, come up with your word together. After you know that Christ has died for you and you were worth it. Look at your neighbor and say you're worth it. Tell your neighbor you were worth it. And our response to him is God. We will praise you. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. So this song, hey, we will on. please hey. ask you hey. to come hey. along with hey. us hey. and just put hey. your words together wherever you are. Amen. Hallelujah. Because the very first light says, let everything, let everything that has breath, that has breath. Praise, the Lord. praise the Lord. Come on. Praise the Lord. Let, every, let everything that has breath. Come on. Praise the Lord. Have you come pray? Come on. Praise the Lord. Let
The Caris Church app is finally here and houses everything you need in one place. You can watch and listen to messages, view upcoming events, receive upcoming church updates in your notifications, give and connect with us. The way we listen to messages has had a makeover. Simply click on the message icon and click the Create Playlist icon to create your own playlist. You can also view the daily Bible readings and access the daily prayers on the go. Search Caris Church in the App Store or Play Store to download the app and start enjoying the benefits. Thank you for watching. Giving Made Easy, the fastest and easiest way to give. Simply visit the giving page on caris.org. You can give via Apple Pay, Google Pay or PayPal. You can also give via bank transfer or text giving. Text giving is only available with a UK phone number. International givers can give using the SwiftBig or IBAN digits provided. The fastest and easiest way to give. Download and stay connected with the David Entry podcast. Keep the Word of God at the forefront of your mind with these impactful and word-filled messages. With each message you download or stream, you gain a revelation of God's Word and take a step closer to becoming who God wants you to be. Subscribe today on Apple Podcast, SoundCloud, Spotify or your preferred podcast platform. This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Carish Church. Previously with David Entry. You need Jesus! <laughs> to sort out this mess in your life and turn that mess into a message. You need Jesus! You need Jesus! You need... It's not a preacher's language. It's, it's the reality of life. When Jesus was the courting of this society. There was a lot more peace. A lot more peace. A lot more peace. It was easy to be a politician. When United Kingdom was a Jesus Kingdom. It was easy to be a politician. It was easy. Police didn't have to do too much work like they are doing now. It, 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 look, we have people in this church who since they became Jesus people, you don't have to tell them you don't carry knife, young man. You don't, you don't, we don't preach that, you know. We don't preach here, don't carry knife. No, it's, it's a not un, unessential preaching. We just preach Christ and they will leave the knife. We just preach Christ, they will leave the knife. They will leave the, they will leave the gangs. We, we don't tell them, don't do gang, don't do gang. It's not a message. The message is Christ. And if this Christ comes into your heart, he will change your story. Oh, yes, oh, hallelujah. And so, when and all to these things to obtain the ground, it, 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 it to entails cheer. some... Some it level of is the traveler's map, the pilgrim's so staff, so the pilot's compass, the soldier's sword, and it's the Christian's charter. It's called what? Here, sacrifice. paradise sacrifice. is restored. Sacrifice Heaven is to help build the church. The gates of hell sacrifice. Sacrifice. Sacrifice Christ to help strengthen believers. Sacrifice to support and sacrifice to serve faithfully in God. that church, in it's that it. department. Sacrifice. It should sacrifice. fill the memory. Sacrifice. It's a and sacrifice and tells suffering. It but it is worth it. Frequently. That suffering and will, prayer will give you the crown. Sacrifice, my it brother. is a mine of wealth, sacrifice. health to the soul, and a river of pleasure. It involves the highest responsibility, will reward the greatest labor, and will condemn all who trifle with its sacred contents. Pray it in, read it through, live it out, and pass it on. Thank you.
and a big shout of praise. Amen. Today is Easter Sunday. And it calls for celebration. It calls for rejoicing. It calls for jubilation. Someone shout hallelujah. Lift his name. Lift his name. Lift his name. Lift his name. Somebody lift his name. His name. Come on, lift up your hands and lift his name. 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 Lift his name.
Bibles with you on uh, on the Easter Sunday morning like this. If you've got your Bibles with you, please raise your Bibles above your head. Raise your Bibles like like believers and say these words after me. This is my Bible. God speaks to me through His Word. I can do and everything He says I can do. I can become what he says I can become, and I can go where he says I can go. This morning, I will be taught the life-changing, faith-generating seed of God's word, and I boldly declare that my mind is alert, my heart is receptive, and I will never be the same again, never, ever, ever, ever be the same again. In Jesus' name, amen. Whilst we stand for the reading of God's word, I want to read from Acts chapter 2. From verse, I'll read verse 22 to 24 and verse 36. Acts chapter 2, verse 22 to 24 and verse 36. Reading from the King James Version. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God amongst you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and the foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holding of it. Verse 36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made the same Jesus whom ye crucified, both Lord and Christ. Here ends the reading of God's holy word. Shall we, shall we please pray? Father, we are eternally and ever sincerely grateful to you for your love for your care and for how far you have brought us. Thank you for the privilege of gathering together as a body of believers and as your children. As we hear your word, Holy Spirit, show us the wonders in God's words which no man can show us. You are the teacher and the master of the truth, the magister veritatis. Teach us the truth. I submit myself and my faculties under your influence, Holy Spirit, under your guide and under your power. Grant me grace that as I speak, the sound of heaven will echo through my voice to the glory of your name for salvation of souls, for deliverance and setting the captives free, for healings, opening of the blind, the eyes of the blind, for changing of lives and changing of our communities and for the spread and the birth of revival in our lands and beyond. We thank you that in you we live and move and have our being. Have your way. Oh, our Lord Jesus, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Please be seated. To be honest, we have the best choir in the world. Help me, let's appreciate our music ministry. 
Amen. I thank God for your lives, and it's nice to see you, and especially on a Sunday morning like this, and much more on an Easter Sunday like this. Praise the Lord. It's, 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 it's beautiful. The scriptures say how pleasant, how good and pleasant in Psalm 133, for brethren to dwell together in unity. It's just good and it's pleasant and it's beautiful. This is, I can guarantee you, this is something Satan doesn't like. He doesn't like our gathering, but Christ died so we can gather. Hallelujah. So we thank God and I thank God for all the 83 days of every daily services. 83 days. And today marks 80, day number 84. And tomorrow will mark day number 85. <laughs> so, thank be to God, tomorrow is Easter Monday. We, we, are, we, we are coming back for an impartation service. Yeah. Those who don't are not excited about it. It's not a problem. We are very, some of us are really excited about it. So, I know you have planned your beach trips, trips and barbecues and parties. You can go on, but some of us, we will still come for impartation to seal the 89, 80, 85 days. Amen. Well, the resurrection on a Sunday like this, what else, what message can we preach? And Friday, I thank God, I preached on the crucifixion. There are two major aspects of the Easter celebrations, the crucifixion that gave birth to the resurrection. The resurrection that gave authenticity to the crucifixion. Now, there are a few things that we need to know about the resurrection of Christ. Um, it is necessary to understand the, 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 our Bible reading today, which we had read from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it talks about how if Christ, if I start by saying that, how can some of you are saying in the church, you are saying there's no resurrection. He said if you say resurrection is not attainable, it's not real, it cannot happen, by implication, you're also ruling out the resurrection of Christ. So they, they, those who are contradicting or those who were denied the supernatural nature or the supernatural act of resurrection, they were not only dealing with the Christ thing. In the, the book of, in, in, the, in the church of Corinthians, people have infiltrated the church with this belief that resurrection doesn't happen. Resurrection, how can resurrection, it's like secular, secular, uh, uh, secular humanism. All right, so it's, it's, they, they, they preach that, no, all these spiritual things like the Sadducees, angels don't exist. Demons don't exist. Resurrection can't happen. And so some have infiltrated the church and were saying that resurrection is, is, a, is a hoax. You can't believe it. So Paul said, how can you be saved and not believe in the resurrection? You cannot deny the resurrection of Christ and be saved. Or let me put it this way. You cannot deny the resurrection of Christ and be a Christian. You, it, 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 it's incompatible to be a Christian and deny the resurrection. It, it doesn't go together. So you cannot, why? Because the resurrection is the high point of the gospel. No resurrection, no gospel. No gospel, no salvation. It's the resurrection. The resurrection is the foundation of Christianity. Not just the crucifixion. It's the resurrection. The resurrection gives meaning to the crucifixion. It takes the, can I have my iPad please? It takes the resurrection to understand the crucifixion. It takes the resurrection to appreciate, thank you pastor. It takes the resurrection to appreciate the crucifixion. So when you study the scriptures very carefully, 
Can you imagine? Watch this. The high point of the gospel is the resurrection. The first preaching of the church. The central aspect of the preaching was the resurrection. There's the scripture I read on the day of Pentecost. Peter stood up with the 11 and he starts preaching. He starts making reference to what is happening. Is there what was prophesied in Joel? But it couldn't happen without the resurrection. So this is how he puts it. He first of all makes reference to Job, sorry, Joel, that this is what we are seeing, that this church thing is, is from Joel. It's been spoken about from the Old Testament. It's traceable to scripture. And he quotes from Joel, and then he reads Joel. So from verse 17, Acts chapter 2, verse 17, verse 18, verse 19, verse 20, and actually verse 21. For whoever shall call on the name of the Lord, can count right. whoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So verse 21 is actually part of Joel chapter 2. It's in Joel chapter 2, I think, verse 31. So 21 ends the quotation. Then as soon as he finished quoting, see how he starts preaching. You are not preaching until your preaching, your preaching is explaining Christ. Until your preaching is talking about Christ. Until your preaching is, is, is the, re, the reference point of your preaching is Christ. So when he finished quoting the scripture, look at the next, uh, the verse 22. He says that men of Israel hear this with Jesus. It starts with Jesus. It starts with Jesus and finishes with Jesus. He said, Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs which God did through him in your midst. As you yourselves also know. So he starts talking about the, the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. He starts talking about the Gospels. How Jesus Christ, you know, it's not something that was done in a corner. It was done openly. You saw him. We saw, you saw the miracles God did through him. He said, Jesus Christ. And then he said, what happened? The Gospel tells us, you guys, he wasn't saying it many years after Jesus has died or 100 years after. He was saying it just a few years after Jesus has resurrected. Now, this was the day of Pentecost, 50 days after the Passover. It was 50 days after the Passover. So Jesus Christ resurrected on the Sunday. 50 days later, Peter was preaching this message. So even not two months after the crucifixion of Jesus, he said, you guys, you, he says that him, you took based on the determined counsel of God and the foreknowledge of God. You took him by lawless hands, crucified, you killed him. You put him to death. You, he died. He didn't say you strangulated him and he escaped. You killed him. We know you killed him. You know he died. We know he died. It is a common knowledge because it's on the tabloids that he died. It's everywhere. It was trending on social media that he's dead. You know it. But that was not, that's not the end of the story. And it says that whom God, but God, verse 24, but God raised him. Verse 24 said, whom God raised up Having lose the pains of death because it's not possible for. Then he begins to make, watch this, connect the resurrection to scripture. He begins to say that for David said concerning him, he begins to quote the scripture. That this resurrection thing, it proves that the scripture is true. Oh, come on. He begins to make reference to that. Then he explains the resurrection, keeps explaining it. Then the, the verse 29, let it be known that David is dead. The man of bread, let it be known that, let me speak freely about David. He's dead. His tomb is with us today. You can see his tomb. He didn't resurrect. So what he said was not talking about him. Even though he spoke in the first person, he was talking about Christ. And he says that this, but Jesus, not David being a prophet, spoke about Christ. And Jesus has resurrected. Verse 33, having ascended on high and seated at the right hand of the Father, he received the promise of the Spirit, which he has poured on us. Now, this is talking still, this is now resurrection message. And then he, he kept, then he quotes from the scripture again and explains, that it, it, it quotes from Isaiah, he quotes from Psalm 2 verse 7. He begins, to, Peter was just quoting, but using the scripture to explain what we are experiencing. And then when he finished that, he, verse 36, he said, let it be known that, this is very interesting text, he said, therefore let it, the house of Israel know, he started by the view people of Israel, he said, let the house of Israel know, assuring that God has raised this Jesus, whom you, he kept coming back to the crucif crucifixion, but the crucifixion was not the end, he said, you crucify him, but God raised him. 
And God didn't just raise him. God raised him to make him Lord and Christ. So let it be known, O house of Israel, that this same Jesus, not a different Jesus, okay? Not the same. This same, oh, come on. Someone say this same Jesus. This Jesus whom you crucified, the Lord has made, the, uh, uh, the, God has made that same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord. He raised him and made him both Lord. So that means he's no more dead. So listen to this. When he said this, that is the, the, the message was finished. There's no other message to add to Christianity. The message that saves is all that. Everything is loaded within this. And when he said that, they were cut to their hearts. The state service, the people began to react, react because now it's time for salvation. That's the message. The resurrection was the high point of the, of the message of the New Testament. It is the high point. Paul said that um, in Acts chapter 26, verse 22, having obtained, therefore, having obtained help from God, to this day I stand. Witnessing, witnessing to both small and great, saying nothing, no, saying no other thing than those which the prophets and Moses said will come. So he said, this thing we are talking about is not new. Prophets and the, the prophets and Moses have, the law and the prophets have always been pointing to it. Say no other thing. What is the no other thing? Watch this. Verse 23. That the Christ should suffer, that he should, uh, 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 that he would be, he will be the first to rise from the, the ah. So he mentions the suffering. Then he said he'll be the first to rise. How can you rise from the dead if you don't die? The high point of the message is the resurrection. But resurrection only belongs to people who die. So he died and then he resurrected. He said, he resurrect, uh, uh, first to rise from the dead and will be proclaimed as, uh, uh, proclaimed light to the Jew, Jewish people and to all Gentiles. So that is it's a resurrection. He, he finishes his message on the resurrection. I'm trying to say that without resurrection, you can't have Christianity. Now, this one, one interesting thing. Most people want to know, in fact, Jesus is a highly respected and highly revered person. It's very respected. Sometimes it's the hatred for the message of Christianity that makes it look like people don't respect Jesus. Can I say that again? Many years ago, I was trying to witness to my neighbor. He told me he was a Rastafarite. <laughs> yeah, I did it many years ago in Ghana. I was trying to witness to him. He said he's a Rastafarite. Hey, Salasi. He, he wasn't like that when we knew him. Then later he became like that. You know, so. And he said they believe in the Bible. And they believe in the teachings. He said, we believe in the teachings of Jesus. And what matters about Jesus is his teaching. Jesus is a great man. His teachings. He gave us an example of how we should be nice. We should love people. It's the teachings. The death. And it doesn't matter. So they will tell you that we believe in Jesus, but what we believe about Jesus, he's a very good man, but it's about his teachings. He's a, in fact, one day I heard a vicar say it on BBC, or a bishop say it on BBC many years ago. He said, the whole Christianity, the point is love. Jesus Christ, all he came is to, the, what he did, the way he showed love to everybody, he was loving people. That's what Christianity is about. So, so, so politicians, even Islam, respects Jesus highly. A certain version of Jesus, but you, let's say, he, he, Islam, Islam believes that Anabi Isa, Jesus, he, he is a prophet, prophet. The prophet that came before their major final prophet, because Islam teaches that the last prophet, when Jesus said there's someone coming, another comforter, is Muhammad. When Jesus said, the, the, <laughs> oh no, no, that's what Islam teaches. So Jesus, they teach that Jesus is a great prophet, and the prophet, Inshallah, says that. <laughs> <laughs> the prophet said, there's another prophet coming. So if you don't respect this prophet who said there's another prophet coming, that means you don't even respect the other prophet he said was coming. So Islam, Islam respects Jesus. Buddhism respects Jesus. They respect Jesus. Gandhi. Gandhi's motivation is Jesus' behavior. 
Many politicians, they, they will want to take the Bible and go according to it, the good works in the Bible. Jesus is the epitome of good behavior. Christians just learn it. And so everything is about these good works and niceness of Jesus. But when you touch on the resurrection, mm, no, 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 there's a reaction because the resurrection, we don't want to know about it. Don't make it supernatural. Don't make anything spooky out of this. Don't go that far. Let's just settle. We all, I think we can live peacefully and everything will be peaceful if you just talk about how good he is and how nice he is. But brothers and sisters, the pivot or, 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 or the high point of the gospel is not the behavior of Jesus. Even it is not, watch this, it's even not the crucifixion. Why is it that the crucifixion has been given so much central place. It, it, it has to. Because it's pointing to the resurrection. The crucifixion is just pointing to the resurrection. So that is why it has to be given a central place. You don't see any symbol in Christianity but the cross. Is there a symbol for resurrection? How are you going to get that symbol? The symbol of the resurrection is the cross. <laughs> why? Because the cross, you know, the pathos of the cross, we can identify with the pathos of the cross. We can identify human, as human beings. What did the cross signify? Pain. I don't know if you have, know what it means to have pain. You can identify. The cross reflects rejection. How he was re rejected. I believe that one or two of us here, or a lot of us here, might have experienced rejection before. Especially if you migrate to UK. You, 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 <laughs> you feel it when you are trying to open a bank account or get a job. You, you <laughs> and you don't have to even migrate. You look for a job. Sometimes you feel rejected. What is not nice when you are let, they let you go after probation? You, you test it. And they say you can only test it, but you can't stay here. <laughs> so when we talk about the rejection that comes with the cross, human beings, we can identify with it. When we talk about, about the pain, we can, when we talk about suffering, we can identify. Many women here, who, uh, many mothers here, know exactly what it means to suffer. Especially when you're going through the labor. It's suffering. We can identify with it. We can identify with rejection. We, we can identify with abandonment. We can identify with pain. We can identify. So it's, it's within the human frame of reference. It's within the human frame of experience. But when it comes to the resurrection, how do we identify with it? No, nobody can identify with it. Have you ever died to resurrect? <laughs> We, we cannot identify with the resurrection. We can only identify with the cross because the, whatever the cross signifies, we know that's us. In fact, forgiveness of sins. We can identify with the fact that when your sins are forgiven, it feels good. It feels good when you have been let off the hook. It feels good when the judge was supposed to sentence you and he says that I dismiss this case. It feels good. We can identify with it. The cross stands for all that. But when it comes to the resurrection, you can. However, the resurrection is the high point. It's the foundation of Christianity. Shout hallelujah. The resurrection. Even though we can't identify with it in the sense that it's not a there's no frame of human reference. It is, we are unfamiliar. The resurrection is an unfamiliar territory for any human being. So people will reject it. But even we Christians, we, we accept it. But how far, what can you even use to symbolize it? The resurrection. Now, the resurrection, why is it so fundamental to Christianity? Because... There are few points. There are, there are, there are few pointers. The resurrection give. The resurrection of Christ. We read from First Corinthians chapter fifteen, verse seventeen. I would I would like to go back to that text. First Corinthians chapter fifteen, verse seventeen. Thank, thank you, Jesus. First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 17 says that, and if Christ be not risen, 
Your faith is in vain. You are yet in your sins. So it's not about if Christ was not crucified. Or. But a crucifixion is supposed to detect the less die. It's supposed to, it's finished. It's not finished without a resurrection. He paid the price for our redemption. But he paid the price for our salvation. But without, without a resurrection, you are still in your sins. That's, how, that's what Paul said. If you, say there's no, if you say there's no resurrection, by implication you are saying Christ did not resurrect. And if you say Christ did not resurrect, then that means that our faith is in vain. That's what Paul was saying. He said, verse 17 again, he says that, but if Christ, Christ is not risen, your faith is in vain, and ye are yet in your sins. Then they who have fallen asleep, those who have died in Christ, have perished. If it is, if it's in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But now Christ is risen from the dead. Said so Christ is risen. Look at the verse 15. I think I should go back. He said, yeah. And we, we are found to be four witnesses. That is if Christ, okay, verse 14 said, if Christ be not risen, then our preaching is in vain. This is what I'm doing here. It's, it's nonsense. It's almost just like public lecture. The resurrection, you see, what gives meaning to preaching is the resurrection. He said that our preaching is in vain. Why? Because the high point of every gospel preaching is the resurrection. So, in fact, you are not actually preaching the gospel if you mute the resurrection. The resurrection is so significant. The resurrection dom- dominates the New Testament's message. The resurrection is the high, as I said, the high point. The resurrection is the divine interpretation of the death of Christ. That's how heaven interprets it. You know, I told you the cross has got a message on Friday. I said the cross has got a message. It's not just the cross, but the message of the cross. What is the meaning of Christ dying on the cross? That is what means anything to the, to the saved. And so, the Bible from here, from what I'm saying... God's interpretation, the divine interpretation to what happened on the cross is the resurrection. Is the resurrection interpreting, sorry, is heaven, God, heaven interpreting what the crucifixion means. Does that make sense? The resurrection is God's interpretation of what the crucifixion means. The resurrection is the divine vindication of the sacrifice on the cross, what does that mean? That means that God said, this thing he did on the cross is, is valid, it's accepted. God said, that is the real thing. That has been accepted. So if it has been accepted, now get up there. I'm going to raise you to prove that it has been accepted. Just in case someone also, also died on the cross somewhere. And said, me, I'm dying for people. What shows that the claims of Jesus Christ, the claims were right? The resurrection is so pivotal. It's so significant. I know you, if, if you've been a Christian, if sometimes before you became a Christian, this has always been a hotbed of discussion. Should we worship on a Saturday, Sabbath day, or Sunday? Why, why, do you, why don't you worship on a Sabbath day? Because God said you should worship on a Sabbath day. The early church never worshipped on the Sabbath day. Our first Bible reading, you look at the first Bible reading in John, in Luke chapter 24, verse 1. Very interesting point. Luke chapter 24, verse 1, it says that now on the first day of the week, to the Jew, and really, what is the first day of the week? It's Sunday. What happened on the first day of the week? They went to the, to the uh, tomb, and they found out that he was, he was resurrected. He resurrected on the Sunday morning. And so, what happened? Jews... It's, I mean, can you imagine a Muslim changing the day of worship from Friday to Saturday or to Monday? What will make it? A Muslim will not do that. It was, no. It's serious sacrilege. It, it, it won't do that. The Jews are so religious. And God gave them the Sabbath day from the day of Abraham. And it, it was enshrined in Moses. And from Genesis chapter 1, it says that, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. And then suddenly, these followers of this Jewish boy who died on the cross says that now our day of worship is a Sunday. That's their day of gathering. They might respect the Sabbath day because they will go to the synagogue and preach there. But Sunday, the first day of the week, was the 
official gathering of the church. Why? Because that was the day of resurrection. That's why, so if someone asks you, but why don't you people worship on Saturday? Because we worship on Sundays because it's the day of the resurrection. It's theologically significant to worship on a Sunday because Sunday is the day of resurrection. In fact, God created Genesis, sorry, Genesis chapter 1. First day, second day, third day, fourth day. Sixth day, Bible says God created man. Genesis chapter 2 verse 1. And the seventh day he rested. How many days are there in a week? Seven days. Seven days, right? Or oh, this one, did you know? <laughs> Seven days. So, so, so what is the day number eight? What's the day number eight? Day number one? Day number one? Day number two? Day number three? Come on, this is not a trick question. <laughs> Let's start again. Day number one, what's the first day of the week? Second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, Thursday, sixth day, and seventh day, Saturday, eighth day, somebody said Monday, (laughs) eighth day, so eighth day starts again. So God rested on the seventh day and then on the eighth day, he recreated the church. That's the resurrection, the day of resurrection. So we worship, the church worship on Sunday because it stands for the resurrection, not on Friday. Why? Because the resurrection of Christ is the foundation of Christianity. Don't forget this. If you deny the resurrection, you cannot be a Christian. You cannot be a Christian and deny the resurrection. If you deny the resurrection of Christ from the dead, you cannot be a Christian. I want that to sink in. That's foundational to Christianity. Fundamental to Christianity. So, the resurrection is so important. Now, the resurrection resurrection points to a few things. Number one, I want you to know that the resurrection points to the fact that <clears throat> we will also be resurrected. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 20 says that where the forerunner has entered. So that means that, you know, in Revelation chapter 21 verse 3 and 4 says that the tabernacle of God is with man. And then verse 4 says that there shall be no more weeping, no more sorrow. God will wipe away all uh, uh, every tears from my eyes. There shall be no more death, no more sorrow, no more cry. Now, the promise of this heavenly bliss, the resurrection is a proof that it's going to happen. The resurrection is a proof that we believers are going to also resurrect. And Jesus, has, the forerunner, has taken the lead, and we are going to go there. Number two, the resurrection is a pointer that Jesus is God. There are quite a few witnesses in the Bible that before the resurrection that were pointing to the fact that Jesus, when he is God, when the angels, when he was born, the angels said that a savior has been born. And the angel told Mary that you are going to have a child and that child you are going to have is going to be called the, uh, the, the Holy One because he's a child of God. The angels pointed to his deities. In his deity, when he was born, angels sang. It's the witness of the angels. Demons in Mark chapter 5 verse 6. Demons said, we know you. You are the Holy One of God. Demons confessed and they knew that Jesus Christ, they cried out and said, what have you got to do? You are the son of the most high God. We know you. Demons knew him. They gave witness to who he was, his deity. His disciples gave witness to his deity. Matthew, uh, 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 James, Peter, John, they knew that he's the son of God. Nathaniel said, you are the son of God. Martha, uh, Thomas said, my Lord and my God. Thomas gave witness. Um, uh, Martha, Martha said, you are the son of God. You 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 are God. They gave witness. Human beings gave witness. The centurion on the cross said, truly, this is the son of God. Human beings gave witnesses. 
Angels did. Demons did. Human beings did. On his baptism, in Matthew chapter 3, verse 17, the heavens was open, and God spoke from above, said, this is my son. God, even before his cross, God gave the witness that this is my son. He's God deity. And on the tra- Mount of Transfiguration, in, John, in, in Matthew chapter 17, verse 3, and the ba- ba- Bible said, uh, verse 3, 4, a voice came from heaven and said, this is my beloved son, hear ye him. So what am I trying to say? Everything was with giving witness that he, has, he had deity. Even before the cross or just after the cross, he had deity. So then, what, what else? But the resurrection was God's Final confirmation that this is my son. Bible says that in Romans chapter 1 verse 4. He was declared the son of God by the resurrection. Declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness. How? By the resurrection. It was a statement from, do you know why they crucified Jesus? They crucified Jesus for what he said. I've been teaching this. And what did he say? He taught, he said a few things about good works. Like the Rastafari said, let's follow the good works he's taught and did. Yeah, that's okay. But they didn't crucify him for that. They didn't crucify him for his teachings. They didn't crucify him for what he, he taught about good or bad. But they crucified him for what he said about himself, who he said he was. They crucified him that he said he's the son of God. You make yourself God because of that. That's why they crucified him. The Pontius Pilate said, I can't kill him. He says that the Jews answered, saying, for good works, <laughs> not because of the good works you are doing that we want to kill you, but for blasphemy, because you, being man, make yourself God. We want to kill you for that. So in John chapter 19, Pontius Pilate said, from verse 6, I find no fault in him. And then he said, I'll give you, I won't crucify him. He says, no, crucify him. And then he says that, they said that, for he says, in, according to our law, anyone who makes himself God, he, said, he says, that, he said, this is interesting. Well, we have a law, and according to our law, he ought to die. Why? Because he makes himself son of God. That's why the, the Jews said, you have to kill him because he said he's the son of God. Now listen to this very carefully. God said, okay, kill him because he said he's the son of God. When you kill him, I'll raise him to prove you wrong that he actually is. So the resurrection was God's endorsement and certification or authentication that Jesus is actually, he has deity. So the resurrection, number one, the resurrection shows that we shall also resurrect. There's a promised bliss coming for believers. Number two, the resurrection is, is, is an a, a endorsement from heaven that Jesus has deity. Jesus is God. Number three, resurrection is a point that the Bible, the word of God is true. Paul said, we are not preaching anything which Moses and the prophets have been preached. In, in Acts chapter 22, sorry, 26, verse 23, verse 22 actually, verse, tw- yeah, verse 23, Acts chapter um, 26, verse 23, it says that, the verse 23, let's, let, okay, let's go for 22. Let's, let, all right, that's okay, let's go to verse 22. It's about 22 and 23. Therefore, having obtained help from God to this, they are still with both small and great, saying nothing, no other thing than those things which the prophets and Moses have said. It was already said in the prophet. Now look at verse 23, that the Christ must suffer and be raised. So the resurrection is proving that what the Bible said or what the scripture said is, is true. Bible says that uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the, the, the second Bible reading, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it, was, it didn't cover that, but verse 3 and verse 4, it says that I give to you first of all what I was just delivered to me, that Christ died for our sins, how? According to the scriptures, verse 4, and was raised, verse 4, and that he was raised, and, and he was, sorry, he was buried, and he rose again from the dead, how? According, the scriptures has already spoken about his resurrection. So the resurrection was proving that the word of God is true. The resurrection proves that the word of God is true. And so everything the word of God has said, you see, if you say the word of God is not true at some point, at what point does it start becoming true? At what point? Like when you are doing evangelism on the streets of London, you meet Muslims who tell you that the Bible used to be the word of God. It contains the word of God, but it's not all the word of God. At what point in time do you say it's not the word of God? And where does the truth of God's word end? The Bible, total scriptura, is to- wholly true. Everything is not words of God, as I've been teaching. It's the word of God. There's a difference between where bad day and where boom day. Latin is where boom day, word of God. Not the words of God. Because there are other words in the, in the scripture that didn't come from God's mouth directly. And the Bible, Jesus said that... Um, um, 
Man must not live by bread alone, Matthew 4, 4, but by every word, every word, every, uh, but, but, but every word that proceeds is the word of God. That is the word of God. So the resurrection proves that the, the Bible is true. The scriptures are true. Hallelujah. And number four, the resurrection also proves that, let me just, the resurrection is also a proof that, um, this, this is a scary one. Judgment is coming. <coughs> yeah. God will judge sinners. He resurrected to make a statement that, listen, if you are a sinner, you'll be judged. Oh, yes. In Acts, Paul puts it this way. In Acts chapter 17, verse 30 and 31, he said, in the days of ignorance, truly, times of ignorance, God is like overlook, eternal, because you didn't know. But now has commanded all, all men everywhere to repent. Next verse, verse 31. Because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness. How? By the man, by the man whom he has ordained. He has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. Do you understand? God said, I'm going to raise it to make it, let you know that I'm going to judge everyone by this one. So the resurrection is... A statement from God, it points to the fact that sinners will be judged. Hello? I like the way the place goes quiet when you talk about things like this. But let me add one more and just throw a little bit light on it and wrap up. Much more for today's purpose, the resurrection is makes the resurrection makes Everything salvation brings available. In other words, you know, when you are saved, listen to this very carefully, please. When you are saved, it comes with a package. So Hebrews talks about, the, I think Hebrews 6, 9, or, yeah, it should be 6, 9, or 9, 6, one, uh, the, 5, somewhere there. The things that accompany salvation. Hebrews 6, 9. But beloved, we are confident of better things concerning you. Yes, things that accompany. So salvation comes with other benefits. It's a package. Yeah. It's, it's a starter pack. <laughs> so, salvation comes with a package. All-inclusive package. It's a deal. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25. He's able to save to the uttermost. So salvation is not just going to heaven, but it's a, it's a package. Salvation includes so many other things. Now watch this. Every other thing that salvation comes to, every other package, or the package of salvation, is it's directly linked to the resurrection. Do you get that? Salvation is directly linked to the resurrection. Let me mention some of the things that we get by our salvation. Every, everything that we have in salvation ties back to the resurrection. Everything we have in salvation ties back to every offered in the package of salvation comes by the resurrection. Everything offered in the package of salvation come by the resurrection. So that means that the, one of the proofs or the things the resurrection points to is the fact that salvation has been accomplished at the cross. Points to the fact. What are some of the things that come by the package. Number one, for God so loved the world. Shall we all say John 3, 16 together? Let's go. Do, do, you know, do, you know, do you know I'm not surprised some people are not saying it? But I knew some people don't like to read the Bible. They, they, they just don't like to read the Bible. All right, let's all read the Bible, okay? That's God's word. All right, speak it out loud. Let's go. Love the world that he gave his only begotten son. Now, whoever believes in him should not perish but have it. One more time. Let's go. 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have an everlasting life. Amen. Please always keep us on the King James. I've told you over and over. All right. Let's go to, uh, let's read from King James. Let's go. That he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's the one you are familiar with. Yes. Right, yeah. <laughs> what do you have? What do you have? Everlasting life. everlasting life is not only living forever. It's also having the Zoe. It's called eternal life. Not internal life. Eternal. Life that is eternal. The, watch this. The God kind of life. The Zoe. We live. In John chapter 14, verse 19, Jesus said, you will live because I live. He said, yet a little while, and the world see me no more. What is he talking about? He's dead and gone. Do you see that? He's dying. But when he dies, it's not the end. Yet a little while, and the world sees me no more. He said, but you see me. Why? Because I live, you shall live also. I'm going to die and live, exit this world, but I will live. And because of my resurrection, you will also live. So you see, that life that we have in Christ is made available through the resurrection. Life, eternal life, everlasting life, is made available through the resurrection. Number two. I always want to talk about the scripture before you, make, you, you get the point. So sometimes, before even I mention the point, somebody who, who takes scripture and a fast thinker will notice what the point is in the scripture. Number two, in John chapter 16, Jesus said, because I said I'm going, verse 5, sorrow has filled your heart. But I said, it is expedient that I go. For if I do not go, the comforter will not come. Can you imagine he tied the receiving of the Holy Spirit to his resurrection. The gift of the Holy Spirit was tied to us. It was tied to the resurrection. In fact, Peter puts it this way, verse 33 of Acts chapter 2, that therefore, Jesus Christ, verse 30, 32 and 33, well, let's take it, let's stay at 33, let's stay at 33. All right, let's go. To, <laughs> let's do 32 and 33. This Jesus has God raised up, wherefore we are witnesses. See, that's the focus of their message. They are witnesses of the resurrection. All right, now look at the verse, verse 33. Wherefore, being by the right hand of God and exalted, of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy, the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has now shed, so now, he had to receive, he had to be resurrected, receive the, and then give, it to, give him to us. So even the gift of the Holy Spirit, receiving of the Holy Spirit, is directly linked to the resurrection. I mean, you can't receive the Holy Spirit if you are not born again. If you are not in Christ, you are, you, for what? So the salvation package of receiving the Holy Spirit is inextricably tied to the resurrection. Number three. Number three. Mm. In John chapter 1, verse 29. Permit me to say. Permit me to say. Yum, 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 yum. This is good. Yummy, yummy, yum. This, this one, this one. I like this one. I like, I like this one. Yummy, 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 yum. He says that the next day, John sees Jesus come. He says that, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Do you remember Paul said that if Christ is not resurrected, you are still in your sins? Ah! So, he died on the cross. He didn't finish the job. He finished it. But the certification (laughs) is the resurrection that brings. Listen, if you've done your driving test and passed, you need 
your certificate and your driver's license. A police officer stops. You say, I passed. I passed. Where's your license? I don't have it. But believe me, I passed. I passed. I passed. I passed. Listen, we know you passed, but it's the license that shows that you have actually passed, and your pass, your pass has been accepted by the government of the United Kingdom. Divially, yes. <laughs> divially is small. It's the queen that has. Sorry, the king. <laughs> His Majesty's government has accepted that you are permitted to drive on the streets of United Kingdom. Why? You passed, but until you are awarded that, the certificate makes you get the license. It's the license. I know you are British. One of our sisters recently, something happened to her. She went to Ghana for a very important event because parents come from Ghana, went to Ghana. And when he was traveling with the family, she's British, born, British, or lived. I don't think he can speak any Ghanaian language. So he's British. Went to Ghana, and when they were coming back, they got to the airport and checking in. He, when he was going, he went with his Ghanaian, her Ghanaian, she went with her Ghanaian passport. So you can just go. You don't need visa if you have Ghanaian passport and you are going to Ghana. Is that not so? Yes. All right. But when he was coming at the airport, Where's your passport? And he brought his Ghanaian passport. They said, okay, where's your visa? He said, I don't need a visa. He said, why? He said, I'm British. Said, <laughs> <laughs> two, weeks, no, two weeks ago, it's a story I'm telling, two weeks ago. He said, I'm British. They said, so, maybe you are, because she thought her accent alone was good <laughs> for, for the Ghanaians to believe she's British. I'm British. I'm British. He said, sorry, mate, but we, we need your passport. He said, but I have the Ghanaian passport. Yeah, this Ghanaian passport doesn't allow you to board the plane to UK. This Ghanaian passport, it doesn't allow you until you have a visa or uh, indefinite, some, uh, you know, something other to, to back the passport. What do you have to back the passport? Nothing. My accent. They said, no. <laughs> you can't go. Do you know what? They didn't allow her on. The rest of the family went, and they were thinking that, how unreasonable could you be? And you know, it's not, it's not like she forgot. She didn't see the point. Why should I take my passport to Ghana? I'm British anyway. I, I, yes. Highly educated person. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I know you are here, but you know, I've, I've been trying to get my head around your behavior up to now. I can't get my head, so please forgive me. But... <laughs> passport. Listen, the passport is what proves that you are British. Your name can be Olu Bog 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 Bog. Aprapraprasiantasika. No, the Ghanaian name sometimes they sound very. Your name can be Ansui. It doesn't matter. Your name can be Shin Jong Ho. It doesn't matter. If you have the British passport, you are British. It doesn't matter how he suffered on the cross. If he does not resurrect, his work on the cross is null and void. It's the resurrection that makes what he went to do on the cross valid. And he says that there's the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 1, he said, I write these things to you that you don't sin. But if, you, if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Christ Jesus. We have an advocate. If any man sins, we have an advocate. It's, 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 it's a mediator. It's, an, 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 uh, 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 it's, it's like a barrister. It's before God. How can a dead man pro, uh, do that job? How can I judge? He must be alive to intercede, ever intercede on our behalf. He must be. The Bible says that he ever liveth to intercede for us. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25. He ever liveth. He, he maketh intercession for, for them because he ever liveth, seeing that he lives to, ever lives to make intercession. What, before the Father, Romans chapter 8, verse 24, he intercedes for us. He's interceding. He must be alive to make sure this sin thing has been taken care of. He says that we have an advocate. And then verse 2, 1 John chapter 2, verse 2. Verse 1 says we have an advocate. Verse 2, look at verse 2. You need to see verse 2, please. You need to see verse 2. 1 John chapter 2, verse 2. Let me go to my Bible. 
because it doesn't seem to be coming on the screen. Is he on the screen? Ah, okay, he's there. He, he, he is a propitiation. I found out that quite a few people struggle to mention that word because it's mouthful. Propitiation. Someone, one of the pastors I was having going through the notes with them, is that propitiation? I said, no, it's not propitiation. It's, it's, I'm talking about full British born and bred. Couldn't pronounce propitiation. Can pronounce propitiation. No, but I understand because it's not every word I can pronounce. And some words you struggle to, you know. Okay, let's, let's leave it because. Uh, and he is the propitiation. What's this? For our sin. Propitiation means appeasement. He placated God. So God is holy and he can't stand sin. But Jesus comes and he presents. He propiti- is the propitiation for our sins and not for for us only, but also for the sins of the whole world. He appeases God. First John chapter 4 verse 10 is a propitiation, propitiation for our sins. So you see, propitiation and sin. He's appeasing God. He's interceding for us. He's standing before God. He must be alive to do that for us. So the resurrection, watch this, the resurrection it, 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 it's like, all right, the, 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 the resurrection what it secures the, as the package, part of the package of redemption, is forgiveness of sins. And it's tied to the resurrection. Number four, quickly. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. He says that when he ascended on high, oh wow, and he gives up, okay, let's, sorry, let's look at the verse 10. Verse 10. Um, uh, let's, let's start from this. It, it will make sense. Let's, let's go for it. Wherefore, it says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive. And what? I don't hear you. And what? And, and what? Spiritual gift of the Holy Spirit. Spiritual gifts. Are, when you are born again, this is all the package. But that spiritual gift, if even connect, is tied to the resurrection. It's when he went up. When he ascended, then he gave gifts. Spiritual gifts or endowment of spiritual gifts is connected to the resurrection. Package number five. Sorry, that's package number. Yeah, pa- package number five. You remember Jesus said, you shall receive power, Acts 1.8, after the... When Jesus resurrected from the dead in Matthew chapter 28, verse 18... He, comes to his, he came to his disciples and said to the disciples, and Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, let's go. I can't hear you. Please, come on. Let's go. In heaven and earth. One more time. It's given unto me in heaven and in earth. So the power that is available for us to walk in as believers become, became available, became actual, by the resurrection. It was after he resurrected, he said, all power in heaven and earth have been given to you. Look at the next verse. Therefore, he said, go into the world. Go ye therefore. See, therefore. Because of that, go. Because now you are going to operate in power. And the power we operate in as Christians and as believers is tied to what happened at the resurrection. Or it's tied to the resurrection. The resurrection makes power. Oh, boy. The re- Jesus said, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come. So don't leave Jerusalem. Wait. Because when I resurrect and when I die and I resurrect, my resurrection is what will permit the Holy Spirit to come and the, you can walk in power. So the power of the believer is made available through the resurrection. And then finally, 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 a unique relationship with God. Romans chapter 6, verse 4. Romans chapter 6, verse 4. Therefore! Sorry, I scared some people. <laughs> at least I'm glad I woke you up. <laughs> My voice is at alarm. <laughs> Therefore, now let me. Oh, yeah, maybe see. I, I, I told you the story of Sunday school teacher asked the children, why is it necessary to be quiet when you go to church? One of the boys said, I know. He said, why? He said, because people are sleeping. 
<laughs> People are sleepy, so you don't have to scream, therefore, because you wake them up. <laughs> he said, therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, this new life we have is directly tied to the resurrection. Just as Christ was raised, even so, we also will walk in newness of life. Oh, if I were you, I would shout hallelujah. Now we will also walk in newness of life. That's why the resurrection means everything to the believer. The resurrection is the settlement of the argument that we are the children of God. The argument is settled. Does that make sense why people, especially in the occult and people who have any sense of spiritual dealings, but not in the Holy Ghost, will vehemently resist the resurrection? They said, send soldiers to put a big stone and guard it, else his disciples will come and steal Matthew. They, were, they, requ- they sent in a special request from the Roman governor, uh, to the Roman governor, can you send top soldiers to guard the tomb? Because this malefactor, when he was alive, he said he would raise up on the third day. So you, after four days, he can leave, but let them stay by the tomb. <laughs> It is it. Command therefore, verse, verse 60, 63. Verse 63. Uh, um, we remember that this deceiver said while he was yet alive, after three days he will rise again. See, Jesus is a prophet. The resurrection make him prove that he's a prophet. The resurrection prove that he's a king. The resurrection prove that he's the, he's the priest who can intercede for us. He said he will rise again. Command, therefore, that the sepulchre be made sure until the third day. They said, until the third day. <laughs> until the, lest his disciples will come by night and steal him away and say unto the people, he is risen from the dead. So the last error shall even be worse. They are afraid. If this guy rises, it will be worse for us. <laughs> they knew it. Whether they steal him, or he rises. They don't want the, the message of the resurrection. No! So even though they didn't believe he would resurrect, they said, just send, make sure that he, he, after four days, after three days, he will start to decompose. So make sure they will see. He said, and so he said, get, get the tomb secured and let it be guarded by your strongest soldiers. Top security. Top security and when the day came on the day of resurrection. There was an earthquake. They fell like dead men. The soldiers, the soldiers fell like dead men and the stone was rolled away. Not for the sake of Jesus Christ. Because they were, they were in the upper room, they were in their room, they locked the room. The Bible said the room was bolted and shut. The Greek shows that it is heavily bolted and shut. They were there, he just appeared. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. He just said, hello, guys, I'm here. Thomas wasn't there for some reason. But he could come, he could walk through doors. He could walk, you don't have to. He had a glorified body. So why do you have to roll out the, away the stone? He was coming out anyway. But the stone must be rolled out so that when the disciples come and come and see whether he's still alive, they can be able to look inside. So when Peter went to the sepulcher, in fact, when the women told them from the reading in Luke chapter, um, chapter um, 24, the verse 11 and verse 12, verse 10, 11, 12. Look at this and I can end on that. Luke chapter 24, verse 11. And there are words, that's the words of the women who went and saw that the tomb was empty. Their words seemed to them as idle tales. And they believe, the disciples. So why do you think everybody should believe the resurrection? Even the disciples who loved him, who lived for him, they didn't believe that he's resurrected. He's risen. They didn't believe his reason. So look at the next verse. Verse 12, verse 12 says that, Then arose Peter and ran unto the sepulchre, and stooping down, he beheld the linen cloth. You know they used to eat with him. Everybody folds their linen differently. Your napkin, those times napkin. 
Now there's a paper towel. <laughs> but napkin. You fold it differently. Some don't fold it. They just, them, others will fold it. In the Jewish custom, the way you fold your napkin is a statement whether you have actually finished and you enjoy the food. So they knew. Jesus had folded the, the he did that. that's why they gave him the wrap. So he got up. He, they saw it folded by themselves and departed, wondering in himself at that which was come to pass. He left. He saw the thing had been folded. He was wondering, oh my goodness. Why? If the tomb was, the stone was there, how would he have been able to see his eye? How would the women be able to see that the tomb is empty? So they had to roll away the stone. So fried from the day, day three, everybody can see inside the tomb that he's not there. You remember the reading? He said, why are you looking for the living amongst the dead? He's not here. He's risen. He's not here. So he didn't need the stone roll away for him to come out, but we needed the stone roll away for us to see that he's actually not there. Shout hallelujah. The resurrection is the high point of the gospel. Did you receive something? Come on, let's give Jesus praise for the resurrection. He's alive! <laughs> He's alive! He's alive! Jesus is alive! Well, I don't want to end the message without praying for a group of people in this building or beyond. Maybe you are in the building and today is Easter and you have understood that salvation is offered freely by Jesus by dying for our sins so we don't have to die. And he resurrected to prove to us that what he did is valid. That means sins can be forgiven. It will be very unfair to your destiny if you die in your sins. It will be very unfair to your sensibility if you reject the forgiveness of sins and die in your sins knowing that you cannot meet God with sin, else you'll be punished and you go to hell. I want to pray for a group of people here. You said, Pastor, I've heard the message of the cross and I need Jesus. I want a new life in Christ. The Bible says that because of, because of the resurrection, we, we will walk in newness of life. You know, this newness of life is the life of God being manifested in human life. But if you are not in Christ, you don't have it. You can be going to church, but it doesn't mean God, you have met God. It doesn't mean you are in Christ. You, you can be a very good person. You don't have to be a bad person to go to hell. You don't have to be a bad person not to know God. You can be a good person, but still you don't have the life of God. I'm talking about the life of God. The life of God. That's why Jesus died. Don't let, don't let us make his death in vain by staying in our sins. You want to say, Pastor, please pray for me. I know I'm not perfect. I know I'm not. I might not be bad, but I'm not perfect. I might be bad, but there's hope for me. I, I need Jesus. I want to start afresh in Jesus. I want new life on this special day of Easter. I want Jesus in my life. The songwriter said, if you want a brand new world, you got to get a brand new people. If you want a brand new people, you got to, you got to get a brand new person. If you want a brand new person, you got to get a brand new heart. If you want a brand new heart, you got to come to Jesus Christ. You are here. You want a heart that is for God. You want to serve God. You want to be in Christ. You want your sins forgiven. You want the life of God in you. And you want to live by this newness of life. I would like to pray with you before I end the service. If that is your genuine desire, and you want to say, Pastor, please pray for me. I want the new life that only Christ can give. I want it. Please lift up your right hand above your head so I can see it and pray with you. Boldly do it from your heart. You want to say, Pastor, please pray for me. I want the new life that Christ gives. I want my sins forgiven. I don't want to be the way I want. I, I am. I don't want to continue. My relationship with God and my relationship with Christ is not the way it should be. Today, I want newness of life. And if it's genuine and it's from your heart, I want you to lift up your right hand above your head. If you want me to pray with you, say, Pastor, pray for for me. Pray with me. I need Jesus. I want to start afresh with Jesus. Please lift up your right hand so I can see it and pray with you. I want to pray with you. Lift up your right hand. God bless you as you do that. God bless you as you do that. Lift up your right hand. And if your right hand is lifted, you don't mind. Can you just jump to your feet so I can pray with you? You say, Pastor, pray with me. If you came with somebody or you came with a friend, you came with a brother, you came with a sister, and you know your sister wants to do it, your brother wants to do it. Don't let them stand alone. Stand with them. Encourage them. Let's do 
do. I want to, I, I want to accompany you. I want to accompany you as you do the right thing, as you do the God thing, as you do the, what is needful for your destiny and for your future. Rise up to your feet. You are here. You want to say, Pastor, pray for me. I want the new, li- new life in Christ. I want the new life in Christ. I need the new life in Christ. Pastor, I need Jesus. Rise to your feet right now so I can pray with you. Rise to your feet. Do it quickly. Do it. If you, if you mean it. If you don't mean it, there's no need to rise. But if you mean it, you know, you know today is Easter. God will refer you to today one day. He said, I called you. I spoke to you. You heard the message, but you didn't listen to me. You heard the message, but you didn't put your confidence in me. Your confidence was in your image. Your confidence was in, your, in the way you think, the way you assess things. But you heard the message, and you knew I want to forgive you. You knew Jesus died for you. You knew your sins can be forgiven. You knew there's availability. I've made available new life. New life in Christ. You are here. You want to say, Pastor, I want the new life. Can you jump to your feet right now as we pray? Right, jump to your feet so I can pray with you. Today is Easter. I think today is the best day anybody can do this. Today is the best of days anyone can do this. Rise to your feet and let's pray. Rise to your feet. You want to give your life to Jesus? You want to be born again? You want to start afresh with Christ? You want to be born again? Rise to your feet so I can pray with you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Rise to your feet. God bless you as you rise to your feet. God bless you. If you came with a friend, you said, I want to accompany you. Let's rise to our feet. Let's, let's do it. Let's do it. Encourage somebody. Encourage somebody. Let's do it. You want to do it. Sometimes people want to do it, but they are shy. I know. I understand. But I think Jesus said, if you are ashamed of me before men, I will also be ashamed of you. Before, when, when it comes to my heavenly father and the angels, you know, God is talking to you. He said, for whoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be also be ashamed. Who shall also be ashamed. Luke 29, verse, uh, Luke 9, 26. You want to say, Pastor, I want it. I can see those standing. God bless you. Maybe you, ha- you are here with a friend. You are here with a, a brother. You are here with a relative. You are here with someone you care about. And he wants to rise to, or she wants to rise to their, her feet. Why don't you help them? Join them and rise to your feet quickly as we pray, right? Rise to your feet. Let's do that quickly. Let's do that. God bless you as you rise to your feet. God bless you, those who are on your feet. And those you want to join, rise to your feet quickly. Let's pray. Rise to your feet. God is calling you. This is your chance. God is calling you. Rise to your feet and let's pray. Now, in fact, those on your feet, if you don't mind, can you come to me in the front? Let's clap for them. Come, come, come. Come with them. Everybody, come. All of you, come. Come together. Let's come together. Let's go. Oh, come on. Let's clap for them. Let's come together. Let's come together. Let's clap for them. Come, come, come. God bless you. Come, come. Come and stand right here. God, are you clapping for them? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Let's all stand together. That's okay. Let's all stand together. Come with somebody. God bless you. Come with somebody. Sam, just, just join us. That's okay. Just join us. I understand. That's fine. That's fine. Even if you're already born again, you already done that. You just come and join us. Because you, you are doing something amazing. Yeah. You brought somebody to Christ. Bible says in John chapter 12, some people came to Jesus. Uh, they came to uh, um, the disciples of Jesus. They said, we want to see Jesus. And then they brought them to Jesus. They said, let's go. Someone wants to do it right. Ask somebody, do you want us to go? I want to walk with you. I'll go with you. Even if you don't know them, ask them, let's go. Why not? Why not? Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. And if they say yes, bring them. Let's clap for them. I say, bring them. God bless you. Bring them. Ask them. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Come with them. Come with them. Come and stand in front with them. God bless you. God bless you. Come with them. God bless you. Come with them. Come with them. Come with them. Don't let somebody go to hell because you didn't encourage them. Don't let someone miss their salvation because when it was in your mouth to encourage them, come on, let's go. Come on. I like the way we say it in UK. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Let's go to the cross. Let's go to Jesus. Let's go to Jesus. This is not disco. It's Jesus. This is not nightclub. It's Jesus. This is not Ayanapa. It's Jesus. This is not Afro Nation. It's Jesus. Let's go to. Je- you know, at work, somebody, sometimes someone will ask you, you Let's go and smoke. We're going to smoke. It's all right. Let's go. Come on. But this one is Jesus. Someone tell me, so, do you want to go to Nando's? Let's go to McDonald's. Let's go and eat. But this is Jesus. Ask someone, you want to go? Let's go. Come on. I know there's somebody sitting there who God is talking to. But you are so shy of Jesus in church. Oh, come on. Don't do that. Don't do that. He wasn't ashamed to die for you. Don't be ashamed to take a stand for him. Hallelujah. Ask somebody, you want, my, you want us to go? I want to go with you. Come on, I want to go with you. I want to go with you. Come on, let's go. 
Are you coming? Are you bringing a person? Are you coming with somebody? Tell somebody, we have to go. You have to. You have to. I know you have to. I, I know you. Preach to that person. I know you have to. <laughs> Let me know you more and more. When I know Guys, congratulations. I salute your courage and I thank God for your life. Please help me. Let's appreciate this precious one. Amen. I, if, if, if you are watching and you also want to make the commitment, you can say the prayer after me. I want to lead you, I want to lead you in a simple prayer and I need you to say it after me. I will say it and you say it after me, but mean it from your heart as your own prayer. Is that okay? God bless you. Oh, some, some more people are coming. That's beautiful. God bless you. 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 Before I pray, if you want to come, why don't you join us quickly? So it's not too late. Why don't you join us? Well, I got, I got to end now because of my time. So we are, you say it after me, but mean it from your heart, okay? As a sign of surrenderance to Jesus, if you don't mind, can you please lift up your two hands and say these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus. Let's all say it out loud. If you are watching online, also say it. Say, Lord Jesus, I know I am a sinner and I've sinned against God, but I believe that you are the son of God. You died on the cross to save me from my sins. From today, I repent from my sins and I ask you to forgive me. Please, please wash me with your blood and make me a brand new person on the inside. Come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. I make a commitment to you that for the remaining days of my life, I will serve you. I will love you. I will obey you. I will be in church glorifying your name by the help of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for dying and resurrecting for my salvation. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I thank you for these precious friends. Let your blessing increase upon them. I pray for grace, for perseverance, and that they will, so they will run the race to the end. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Now, we'll be closing soon, but we want to write your name and pray for you and stay in touch with you. We want to connect with you because we, we love you. We are interested in your well-being, your spiritual well-being. We want you to do well. Because if you do well spiritually, it will affect every other aspect of your life. So we want to give you somebody who can stand with you or mentor you and encourage you and a team who will be praying for you constantly. Because, because of that, there's a team in the room just next to this building. They are waiting for you. Trained, they are stewards. They will share a few things with you. If you have any question, you are free to ask them. It's going to take about three minutes to five minutes and you join us back as we get ready to close. Is that okay? They will write your name so we can pray for you. We would love to pray for you. Give us the privilege to pray for you and to stand with you. Amen. So there's a gentleman right behind you. He will lead you to where the, the stewards are and then in about three to five minutes you join us back. Is that okay? Can you turn and face him? Look at him. Turn. Please follow him. Let's clap for them. Please follow him. Please follow him. Please follow him. We hope you were blessed by today's message. It is the will of God that we all come to accept Jesus as our Lord and Saviour and come into the new life in Christ. If you have just said the sinner's prayer, please send us an email at amen at charis.org where we can connect with you and help you with your spiritual development. We look forward to speaking with you. <laughs> let's do everything very quickly let's do our tithes and offerings and as soon as we finish we bless you and you, if you parked somewhere you run and go and move your car and go home and enjoy the rest of your Easter is that okay alright Bible said it's more blessed to give than to receive now there are different ways of giving there's a QR code you can scan the QR code and there's free Wi-Fi here and the Wi-Fi is 
Uh, pa the Wi-Fi information is on the screen. Yeah, I prefer this screen because it's clearer on the screen. It's on the screen. You can have, if you, just in case you don't have phone connectivity, free Wi-Fi access. And you can scan the QR code. It will take you to a given page where you can freely give. On the other hand, if you want to give physical cash, the ashes are standing in the aisle with envelopes in envelopes in the hand. You can, you can indicate by raising your hands. They will save you for an envelope. You can use that for your physical cash. When you finish, hand it, hand it to the ashes. Or if you want to scan the QR code and you can't see the screen, the ashes also have a printed version of the QR code. You can scan that and then give. It's more blessed to give than to receive. However, if you are a visitor, you are not under obligation to give, right? And giving is free, but it's a blessing to give. Shall we pray over our offerings? Father, thank you so much for giving us the privilege to give. Thank you for your word says that it's more blessed to give than to receive. And he who sows sparingly will reap sparingly. He who sows bountifully will reap bountifully. As we give our tithe, we give our offerings and any seed. We pray that let your blessing be upon our giving. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, let's receive the... validation of the work of the cross the, the, the argument is settled yeah. the resurrection somebody shout hallelujah, hallelujah. let's appreciate God's servant Woo. Yeah. the charter of the believer our bible says that those who labor in the word they deserve double honor let's appreciate him once again Woo. praise the Lord yeah. hallelujah now, if today is the very first day you're worshiping with us in carries like this on a resurrection Sunday morning, just give me a wave wherever you're seated. Can you rise up on oh, your wow. feet and keep standing while we give you a special carries welcome? You're welcome. Let's welcome them. Keep standing, keep standing, keep standing, keep standing. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for coming. You added color to our service. On behalf of Jesus Christ, the head of the church, Universal and Triumphant, and on the behalf of Reverend Dr. David Angie, the apostle of this commission. I welcome all of you to Carrie's Church. This is Carrie's Church. If you do not have a church you call your own, guess what? You have found one. Yes. Oh, yes. And I can strongly recommend this church for you. Now, after the service, our host team will come for you and you'll be refreshed. But before you take your seat, please, let's pray. Father, we thank you for these amazing loved ones, Lord whose steps you ordered to have fellowship with us today. We pray that, Lord, you will deposit a blessing 
over their lives that their lives will never be the same again. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Wedding bands, wedding bands. Oh, yes. I hereby announce. <laughs> Let us hold fast our profession. It's a profession of faith. Hold fast. You know, you see the hold fast has appeared here again. Hold tight. Hold fast. Why? Because you, you can tell we have a high priest there. And so you have to hold fast. Don't compromise on your belief in Christ. Don't let the situation change your position in God. Do this church thing. Do it well. Bro, sis, do it well. Do it well. Do this church thing well. With sincerity, with fidelity, with humility, and with purity. Do it well. Hold him fast. The profession of your faith. Our high priest works with the profession of our faith. And so, when and all these things to obtain the crown, it it, it will entail some some level of work, perseverance, and suffering. And so, as anything you want to do for God, it will put a demand on you. It's called sacrifice. It's called what? Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Sacrifice to help build the church. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Sacrifice to help strengthen believers. Sacrifice to support and sacrifice to serve faithfully in that church, in that department. Sacrifice. 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 It's it sacrifice entails suffering, but it is worth it. That suffering will crown will give you the crown. Sacrifice, my brother. Sacrifice. Most of us will only sacrifice for our interests. Sacrifice for the things that we want that will embellish our lives on earth. It might not be bad in itself. Look at the way you sacrifice for your education. You sacrifice for your children. You sacrifice for your business. You sacrifice for your job. You will sacrifice for everything. But when it comes to God, there are people who claim they love God. But your level of sacrifice is zero. It's wanting. It's questionable. Your level of sacrifice, your level of sacrifice for God's people, for God's work, and for the church. Repent, my brother believer, my sister believer. The word you hear, the word of God you hear is what determines the faith you walk in. I repeat it. The word of God you hear is what determines the faith you walk in. And so preaching is not an item on church calendar or church event. Preaching is the means to nourish the human spirit. Preaching is the means to bring in faith to the hearers. Preaching is the means to let the, God, the power of God invade people's life. Preaching is the means to saturate an environment, an atmosphere, a, a situation with God's word and the power of his word. He said God manifested his word through preaching. So preaching is the means to see God at work, to allow, permit God to work in a, in a life or in a situation. So preaching is not just an item. That is why every genuine and decent godly preaching must be based heavily, strongly on the word of God. On the word of God, because no man has anything to say which can help man apart from the word of God. So it must be hinged on the word of God Preaching of the word of God is what brings deliverance and relief. We hope you are blessed by today's message. It is the will of God that we all come to accept Jesus as our Lord and Saviour and come into the new life in Christ. If you have just said the sinner's prayer, please send us an email at amen at charis.org where we can connect with you and help you with your spiritual development. We look forward to speaking with you. Apple Pay and Google Pay is a fast, easy way to give from anywhere, anytime. It's just three simple steps. First, visit charis.org forward slash giving. Second, type the amount you want to give. Third, choose Apple or Google Pay as a method of payment and click pay. 
That's all there is, the fastest and easiest way to give on the go. We hope you are blessed by today's message. It is the will of God that we all come to accept Jesus as our Lord and Saviour and come into the new life in Christ. If you have just said the sinner's prayer, please send us an email at amen at charis.org where we can connect with you and help you with your spiritual development. We look forward to speaking with you. Giving Made Easy, the fastest and easiest way to give. Simply visit the giving page on charis.org. You can give via Apple Pay, Google Pay or PayPal. You can also give via bank transfer or text giving. Text giving is only available with a UK phone number. International givers can give using the SwiftBig or IBAN digits provided. May God bless you as you give. The Caris Church app is finally here and houses everything you need in one place. You can watch and listen to messages, view upcoming events, receive upcoming church updates in your notifications, give and connect with us. The way we listen to messages has had a makeover. Simply click on the message icon and click the create playlist icon to create your own playlist. You can also view the daily Bible readings and access the daily prayers on the go. Search Caris Church in the App Store or Play Store to download the app and start enjoying the benefits. Thank you for watching.